brother Alejandro Ibrahim, founder and host of the Conscious Youth Podcast, also known as KYP, coming to you with another lesson for the day. <clears throat> so today, family, we will be going into 20 principles of black manhood. Now, I made this originally in September with my brother Ahmad Saunders. Shout out to him at Winston-Salem State University. He attended the currently attends there. And we went on Instagram Live and we said, yeah, we need to come up with principles, 10 principles originally for black manhood. And while we were doing it, I mean, the spirit of God, the ancestors wants to just come upon us and we were able to make 20. So we made 20 principles of black manhood. 20 principles of black manhood. <clears throat> now I'll introduce these to several brothers out there. You know, some of them have tried to cut off my head. Say, oh, I don't think everybody's perfect. And I understand, but we are not perfect. We are human. I completely understand that. But every group has principles to live by. You go to the Asian culture, they have their principles, and they live by it. That's why they're the most successful ethnic group in America. Okay? You go to other communities, you see them have principles. Where's the principles of the black man? Where's our principles? Where are the principles of the black community? We need a set of principles, brothers. Because we are on life support. The mental layer is hooked up to the black man and we out here trying to breathe on our own. If we do not get our condition together, if we do not get ourselves together as black men, the original men, brothers, we may go extinct. And as I said, I'm being blunt on this podcast, brothers. I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to tell you that, you know, oh, I understand. No, brothers, we cannot be doing no more excuses. We need to understand that we are a pivotal point as black men, but we are under attack. Our masculinity is under attack, and we need to get ourselves together. So I made 20 principles of black manhood, 20 principles that I believe as black men we should follow, we should know who we are. That's what I believe. So I made 20 of them. So let me stop talking about them, and let me go into it. <clears throat> Before I start, I advise those who are listening to please get a pencil, a pad, or paper. And to be ready to um, take notes on this. Because these are 20 important principles, my brothers. We need to get ourselves together. So please, I'll give you some time to go get it. Okay. And I think we should be ready to indulge in this um, lesson for the day. <clears throat> so 10 principles of black man. Principle number one. The black man must have knowledge of self. Now, what do I mean by knowledge of self? I don't mean, oh, I know I'm Alejandro Ibrahim. No, I'm talking about, do you know where you come from? Do you know who you truly are? Don't don't tell me about your ancestors came in 1619. Mm -mm, that is not the beginning of you, black man. That is a small portion of your history on this earth. You are the original man. You are the original man. I'll say it one more time because you are the man that God made. You, you are the man. You understand? You're the man. So when you think about, oh, I can't do this, you can do anything because your ancestors were the first ones to do it. <clears throat> Don't come to me talking about I'm not good at math. But then you are good at math. You just need to try a little bit harder to make it because your ancestors were the first mathematician. Don't tell me about you can't read, brother. You can't read because your ancestors were the first ones to read. You can build anything. You can build an empire because your ancestors were the first to build an empire. You're the first economist. You're the first everything, black man. So all these careers that people talking about, your ancestors did. The first musician, the first rapper, the first anything, your ancestors did it, my brothers. You, you did it. Your people did it. So don't come out here ever doubting yourself. Knowledge yourself is knowing who you are as a man. Knowledge yourself is knowing that as a black man, you are the original man on earth. That your ancestors found an empire with blacksmiths, artisans, traders, warriors. Everything. We did everything. So don't ever wonder who you are. You got to really go and get the knowledge. Read the books. Go into the text. Learn about the Ashanti Empire. Learn about the brother Shaka Zulu. Learn about King Mosheshwe. King sorry, brothers. Mosheshwe. In Lesotho, I'm sorry, brother. Some of these names I struggle with pronouncing, but I'm trying my best. <clears throat> the kingdom of Lesotho. Learn about, learn about the kingdom of Dahomey. Learn about the, the Sokoto Caliphate. About, about the the Wolof kingdoms in in Senegal. Learn about all of these. About Timbuktu, Mansa Musa. Learn about all of these, because these are all you, my brothers. The Empire of Kush. The 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 Egyptians. 
everything, brother. Learn about it. Learn about it all. Learn about the Haitian Revolution where your ancestors stood up. Learn about who the black man is and why we have somehow now begun to deviate from who we are. Learn about it. So get that knowledge yourself. Number two, the black man must respect and protect the black woman. I, I don't want no questions, my brothers. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking for this. is not for debate. I understand respecting sisters can be hard at times. Don't get me wrong. I'm a brother, and I understand. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes a sister will say something to you like, well, what'd you just say to me? But we gotta be men. We gotta be disciplined. Man must be disciplined, especially in this era where we've seen that being undisciplined has led to so many problems in our community. So we must understand that as men, we cannot act off of impulse a lot of times. We must act off of strict discipline. <clears throat> so I know she just called you a name. And I know you upset. But try your best to respectfully tell her, hey, you don't address me like that. I'm a man. You don't call me that. Now that is not who I am. You must be talking to someone else. Try your best, brother. Don't go out here out of the mouth cussing them out. Try your best. We are men and we must act off of discipline. I understand sisters may say things to you, but we, we gotta be better. We the men, bro. We are the leaders. We gotta be the leaders in the community. In order to do that, we must act off of discipline. <clears throat> and also, another thing, my brothers, um, when it comes down to protecting, we must protect our women. I, I don't, this, that one definitely ain't for debate. You, uh, you brothers out here on a college campus, if you see a sister out here walking, say, can I walk you to your dorm? Be respectful. Let her know you're trying to protect her, that you care about her. I do that. I walk sisters back to their dorm in the middle of the night. I've done it. Because if a sister, you know, is coming out the dorm and I see she needs help, I'll say, hey, let me walk you. I do that. Because that's my duty as a man to protect my black woman, who is my number one woman. Who is the woman? All of you guys have a black mother. You guys protect your black mama, so protect your black woman. Because eventually that sister that you're protecting will become a mother. So protect her. That's what we got to do, black men. We must act off of discipline, not emotion. <clears throat> Another thing. The black man must never fall for anything and know his principles. Know your principles, black man. Don't fall for anything. This world is full of temptation and lies, and they just, get, they just agitate you. They just come straight for you, brother. You a black man. You the target. We already know. We already know white supremacy is waged the war on the black man. We already know. So we can't let that war defeat us. We gotta fight back. And the number one way of fighting back is to know your principles and don't fall for anything. Some brothers out here still believe we are a curse race. Some of us really still believe that. And we act like it because we say, oh, what? It's not gonna fix anything anyway. Don't give me none of that. You are not a curse race at all. We are not. We just have to wake up to the situation at hand and strategically address it. <clears throat> so, do not fall for anything. You ever think anything is a lot of research? Look it up. We're just the age of technology, my brother. There's no excuse for you not to look up something that found the truth. Read your book. Go into it. Don't fall for anything. Stand on principle. We got to stand on principle as black men. I know it can be tough. Don't get me wrong. I'm a man too. But it can be tough. All right? Number four. This one's about to make some of y'all right now turn me off. Y'all about to literally exit out of listening to what you're listening to right now because you guys don't want to talk about this one. But like I said, we got to be blunt here because this is this is the time, especially for black men, when we cannot afford to beat around the bush. We must address the situation head on. So I'm going to this one, brothers, and be prepared because we're going, I'm going to get some dialogue after this one for seriousness. All right, we're going to go have a little uh, extra amount of dialogue into this one, okay? <clears throat> the black man must start a family. With a black woman. Let me repeat again. Because I know some of you brothers probably just paused it and threw your hands up. So let me say it again. The black man must start a family with a black woman. This ain't enough for debate, brothers. No, you, you, no, we are not debating this one. This is what we got to do as black men. Our duty is to our women. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't care how many, oh, this woman, she's very beautiful. I love, love is love, brother. Don't give me none of that. Love is not love. Love shows where your loyalty lies. And your loyalty lies with the black woman. The woman who's been there with you through the ill, through the rough, through the great, through the bad. When 
our ancestors who were prisoners of war. And I say prisoners of war because the act of taking our ancestors to the Americas was an act of war on the black man and black woman, on the black race, on the black culture. When they took our prisoners of war, our ancestors who were prisoners of war, to the North America, the black woman was right there with us. The white woman wasn't down there in the hole saying, save me. No, she wasn't saying that. No mother woman was saying that. But the black woman was over there. We were with her. She came with us. Ain't no other woman come with us. And some of y'all brothers have the nerve to disrespect your black woman talking about, oh, she got an aggressive issue. Black woman too aggressive. If you don't stop acting like a little girl, what type of nonsense is that? I'm sorry. We we don't, uh uh-uh. What what is that? The black woman's too aggressive. You don't stop that. Acting like a little kid. Talking about the black woman's too aggressive. You done lost your mind. The black woman is the number one woman for the black man. I don't care what you have to say. She's always been there for us. It's nothing like going marrying a black woman and committing to her after 400 years in the in North America. In the in United States of America, it's been 400 years. In the Caribbean, it's probably been, it's been longer. In South America, it's been longer. <clears throat> but it's nothing like committing to your black woman. After 400 years of hell, that you still, and we gotta understand that the one thing that white supremacy hates is the black family. Because in the family, you get the man, the black man, and the black woman, and they introduce pro black, black nationalistic, black nation building tendencies to their black children. That's why they wanna destroy the black family. The black family made Marcus God, the black family made Malcolm X. Because if you listen to Malcolm X, he talked about how his parents were already speaking and preaching about Garvey principle. The black family made Martin Luther King. See, the black family made me. My mom and my dad, they were drilling me from when I was young about who I am as a black man. They weren't, they weren't out here just looking, discovering. They knew who they were, so they taught me who I was. Because they both came from families. So when you come out here and you talk about, oh, you want to go for another, uh-uh, I need you to get with a black woman, my brother. She is the number one woman. After 400 years of all the hell we've been in North America, to you being able to marry a black woman is the utmost revolutionary thing you can do as a black man. Because you're telling white supremacy now. You can try all this, but you're not going to separate me from my black woman. When you go with a black woman, you build a foundation for a nation. You leave a legacy with a woman who can relate to you. No other woman out here can relate to you like a black woman. I don't care what you say. As my friend always says, you can't talk black and you can't sleep. You can't sleep white at night. My friend always says that. You can't be out here talking pro-black, but sleep white at night, brother. We need you to sleep black. This is respect to all women. This is no respect to no women. But I'm telling you as a black man, you need to go for your black woman. Because she is the number one woman of you. She is the number one woman of our race. Make your black mama proud. All y'all got black mamas. Make your mama proud to marry a black woman. Tell her that I value you so much, mama. I'm going to marry a black woman to show you how much I value you. They're trying to get rid of black kids out here. They don't want us to have a black family. You defy white supremacy. You have a black family, brothers. So, I'll say it again. Rule number four. Principle number four, rather. The black man must start a family with a black woman. This is not up for debate, brothers. The year is 2020. We are on life support. The only person who can take us off life support is if we commit to a black woman. We will get off life support. Brothers out there who are... Who, brothers out there... Stop Stop this whole running around thing. Get yourself a black woman in commitment. But that's going to play into another rule. So we're going to keep our rule. <clears throat> number five. Principle number five. The black man should never look down. If you guys have watched the um, Roots miniseries in 1977 and the remake in 2016, Kunta Kente's father holds him up to the sky and says, Behold, the only thing greater than yourself. See, from that instance as a baby, Kunti Kente's father, even though he was a baby, was letting him know, son, ain't nothing greater than you on this earth but the skies and the heavens above and God. When did we as black men start walking around thinking we lesser than human beings? When did we start putting our heads down? 
when we was when we were in the motherland, our heads were up. We were ready to confront war. We weren't afraid of nothing. Now all of a sudden we out here putting our heads down. What is this black man? Don't ever look down, black man. You always look up. Hold your head up high to the sky. The only thing greater than you was above you, brother. You were the original man. So don't look at things. Oh, I mean, don't you ever think you're inferior to the white man. You are the original man, black man. Don't ever think you're inferior to anybody. Don't ever think that. You are nowhere near inferior, brothers. You are the greatest creation of God being a black man. The great creation of man. A black woman is the greatest creation of woman that the guy has ever made. We know this. The black man and black woman are partners. We are teammates. We are not enemies. So again, the black man should never look down. Always hold your head up high. Know who you are. And know that you and the black man have the potential to change any situation possible. As long as you know you can, you can manifest it. We can manifest things, family. We can make them become reality. <clears throat> Moving forward. Alright, this one's about to get some of y'all brothers again another eye roll. Some of y'all about to cut me off. Some of y'all about to cuss me out. But brothers, I don't care. Because as I said, this is 2020. We cannot dance around the bush no more. The black man we must be in healthy relationships and not engage in random sex. I'll say it again for the brothers who try to tune it out. I'll say it again. The black man must be in healthy relationships and not engage in random sex. I don't want to hear about this. Oh, well, you know, brother, she said that she wanted to have sex. So I said, I do. Don't give me none of that. What you think you are? So you just going to go out there and do that? No, brothers, I'm sorry. We got to respect our women. And we, we, the utmost respect you can give to your woman is not to go for her for sexual desires and pleasures. I know, brothers, I'm a man. Don't get me wrong. I have testosterone. I have, I have, I'm a man. We have needs. I understand. I get that feeling. But as I said, lust is an emotion. The urges are emotion. They're feelings. We have to act off of principle. We cannot be out here doing this to our women, brothers. If you really respect a black woman, you wouldn't do that to her. And again, think about how you approach these women, brothers. You're going to have a daughter. Yes, most of us are going to have daughters as black men. Would you want a man, a black man to approach your daughter the way you approach some of these women talking about you just want to sleep with them? Think about that as a man. That's what I always think about when I approach sisters. Will I, do I want to be the man that is disrespectful? To my daughter. Do I want to be that type of dude going, who might be disrespectful to my daughter? Do I want to be that black man that my daughter welcomes and is appreciating and is our foundation? We got to understand, you're going to have a daughter, as I said. Be the man that you want to approach your daughter. Be that respectful black man. Don't be out here doing women wrong because it's going to come back on you, brother. I've heard stories. It will come back on you. Treat our black women with utmost respect. We're not sleeping together. No, we're not sleep. We're not having sex. No. Unless we have some serious committed relationship. Then we can talk about that, that realm of a relationship. But we are not having sex with random women, brothers. This is why 76% of black women are raising black children without daddy. Because some of us brothers, we just want to have sex. We don't want to commit. We're afraid of committing, sometimes because our daddy wouldn't dare to commit to our moms, but sometimes because we just don't want to be men and step up. We don't want to commit. And we got to get that out of our system. You have to commit to your black woman, black man. Your power as a black man lies in your black woman because she's always going to make you a stronger woman. But you got to commit to her. If you say you value black women, if you say you respect black women, you want to be out here sleeping and having random sex with your black woman. You would be out here saying, hey, uh-uh, Let, let's, let's try to have a relationship. Let's try to commit to each other. Let's try to build something. Brother, you, sex is a spiritual force. It's a, it's a strong force. You can't be out here having sex with multiple women and not expect your spiritual force to be mixed up or hers because you damage your sister as well. The energy it takes for you to have sex is the same energy that it takes for you to run 20 miles. So think about that. You're wasting energy to just get a, a, a satisfaction. 
a good portion of your of sperm material from your brain. Sperm material has brain material. So think about that. You're wasting your brain material just to have that sexual sensation. Or do you want to use that brain material when you're in actually a relationship with the goal of marriage or when you're in marriage, when you're actually building a nation with your black woman? So, brothers, as like I said, we cannot be having random sex. All right. Number seven, the black man must take every opportunity to do good. Brothers, we got to take the opportunity to do good out here, brothers. You see a sister struggling, let's try to do good with her. Let's try to treat her correctly. Let's help her out. We must always take every opportunity to do what's right. To, to treat our women with respect, we must take every opportunity. We must take every opportunity to, to do good amongst our people. You see somebody struggling, you help them out. You know, hey, you know, this brother, he needs some money. Help that brother out. Let's take every opportunity to do good within our own community. Let's help each other out. You see somebody struggling and say, help them out. We, we got to be a we gotta be a family out here, brothers. We got to help each other out as black men. So, yeah, take every opportunity to do good. Don't say, ah, I'm going to take a day off. No, keep on doing it. Because when you do good, good things will come unto you. And that's a known principle and fact. So keep it up, brothers. We need y'all. We need to be doing good out here in our community. Number eight, the black man must dress appropriately. Brothers, some of the way we dress in just ain't right. For some odd reason, our pants just cannot stay up. They just got to keep on falling. For some reason, we want to go out here with a do-rag to class. I'm out here in college and dudes will come out here with do-rags to class. They will go to class with a do-rag on. I have no problem with you wearing a do-rag at all. I understand. I've worn it before. But when we are in class, we do not wear that, brothers. We are out here. We are representing our household. We look appropriate. We have to look decent. We have to look clean and cut, brothers. Some of us want to wear white beards to class. I'm sorry, brothers. We cannot do that. We have to look. We have to look ready. When you step out to this world, you have you don't know who you'll meet. I met the chancellor of my university, and I was dressed in my African clothes, and I didn't even know he was the chancellor until one of the people around me said, "Hey, you know, as a chancellor." I said, "I didn't even know who that was," but he saw the way I dressed. He saw I was looking appropriate. My, my, my shirt was right. My hair was right. Everything. You could see Alejandro Ibrahim. He didn't think I was coming out the house. He knew I was ready for business. Some brothers out here want to walk around with a white beater on. I think I said that earlier. Brothers, we cannot be doing that. We have to look appropriate. We do not know who you're going to meet. We are ready for business. Life is business, brothers. We must look appropriate. I don't care what, what, what you say, brothers. We got to look appropriate. We got to look clean and neat. We can't be out here looking every type of way. This is, co for, for the youth that are at college especially, this is college, my brothers. We investing in our future. And when you out here looking like you don't care about your future, people going to treat you with that same respect. And I know some people might say, oh, you shouldn't treat people like based off the way they dress. We can say that all we want, but brothers, let's just be real. That's the way the world's working right now. We got to treat each other, we got to treat ourselves with respect, and each other with respect on dressing. We have to hold each other accountable. You see a brother, he can't pull his pants up, ask him, do you need a belt, brother? I got you a belt. I always tell people, you need a tie, come to me. I'll get you a tie. I have clothes. I can help a brother out with. You need something, let's help each other out. But we cannot let ourselves just act and dress any certain type of way in public, especially when we're on college campus or at school. You represent in your household. And I'll try to be best known that the Ibrahim household is about business. We dress appropriately. We don't play no games. So think about that, brothers, as you're out here walking around. Do you want to be the one who represents your household to the utmost? Or do you want to be the one who's slacking off? Hold your pants sagging. You, you go to class. You, your hair not together. You got you got the do-rag on. You got the wife beater on. You got slides. Mm-mm, brother. I go to class. In high school, when I went to class, even when I go to the library here, I'm dressed appropriately. My shoes are right. I'm ready for business. You can tell. My, my mom used to get on me. My mom and dad took your shirt, and I'm like, I don't want to do this. You think I really want to tuck my shirt in, brothers, when I was in high school and middle school? I didn't want to do it. 
But I began to see that when I did do it, people held me to a high degree of respect. People knew I was about business. The way you dress is a reflection upon you, brothers. If you value your education, you're going to take it seriously. If you value the way you are perceived out here, if you value the way people look at you, your peers, your elders, you're going to dress a certain type of way. When I look back in the 1930s and I look at how black men used to dress at HBCUs, they were always in suit and tie. They were neat, clean. They were ready for business because they knew education was serious. We can't be taking education out here for granted. We got to dress for it. So let's dress appropriately, brothers. Rule number one. Nine. Sorry if I studied. You couldn't hear that correctly. The black man should always seek urgency for higher education. Now, I know some of you guys are talking about, what are you talking about, college, this, that. I'm talking about, when I say higher education, I'm talking about within black consciousness. <clears throat> we spend so much time out here playing video games. Listen to trash music, and I say trash music because a lot of this music out here, it is not productive. We cannot listen to these rappers out here calling our women female dogs, calling our brothers the N-word, uh, calling us all types of names. All this is it, disgusting, my brothers and sisters. I can't sit here and, and say that it's black culture because it's not. That's not what we grew up on as black people. We never started that. That's the tool of the oppressor. Hip-hop is good. KRS-One is good. Big Daddy King was speaking truth. That's good. Public Enemy is good. Many brand new mean is good. Tribe Called Quest is good. Very good conscious music. I listen to it all the time. But what's coming out now? We should not be listening to that black man. And we, we just gotta be rude with ourselves. So, as I said, we spend so much time indulging in, ki- in, care- in things that we don't need to be doing that don't even benefit us. When we could be reading a book. Watch a lecture, brothers. I have I I know so many lectures. You can watch the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys, the Dr. Khaled Muhammad interview with Donahue. Those are two very good lectures. I think every black man should watch. In the beginning process, we can read the Destruction of Black Civilization by Dr. Chancellor Williams, and I have that book. And I have a friend who is also conscious, and she said um. She would like to read the book, and she had um, no disrespect by Sister Soldier. So I said, okay, we did a book swap. She got that book, I got my book. Well, we're, But we're both indulging in hiring our education of black thought. We have to do better by that family. We have to actually read books. We have to actually listen to lectures. We got to stop giving so much attention to things that won't matter. You listen to so you watch so much TikTok videos, yet still though you don't understand how white supremacy works. And when white supremacy confronts you, you get all upset because you don't know how it works. <clears throat> you do so much of this, that, and the third. We party so much as black people. Lord have mercy, we party so much. But we wonder why the issues still exist in the community because we give so much effort to partying. You'll see people out here. Oh yeah, don't drink, don't get ready. Don't put so much time into preparing for a party. But they won't even put that much time for preparing to start a community project or a community library. So let's do better, my brothers. We got to go for higher black education. When I say higher education, I mean in black thought. Also, though, don't limit yourself. Go to college as well. Try to go to college, brothers. It's very important. A lot of people say, oh, go to college for what? It's too much money. If there's one thing I'm going to my first semester in college, it's connections. I was able to start this podcast because I had connections on this campus. People who were here to help me, these connections will be lifelong because you don't know, you'll be 40 years old and you might say, hey, I know that guy from college. He can hook you up and maybe help you start a business. He can help you get a job. College is about connections, my brother and sisters. It's not only about the education because you can make lifelong friends here and you can make long standing relationships that can benefit you economically, financially, and spiritually. So again, let, let's let's go for the higher education of black thought and also in terms of physical education such as school and also college as well. Let's do all of that, brothers, because we are men. We gotta stand up. We we gotta we gotta lead now. All right. <clears throat> Rule number ten the black man must not smoke or drink non traditional liquor. I said non traditional liquor because um Nigeria, for example, there's palm wine. I hear it has health benefits. I've drinking it before. So I, that's more cultural. Our ancestors were doing that. 
But as for this Hennessy out here that we like to drink, this vodka, brothers, I don't want you, we should not be drinking that. It's not healthy for the body. It can hurt our body. We should not be drinking that. The oppressor wants us drinking. The oppressor wants us smoking this Kush instead of learning about the kingdom of Kush in Africa. So he wants you to smoke this Kush, but he don't want you to learn anything about the real one in Africa. See, the real kingdom that we founded. But again, we don't want to do that, but we got to get back, black man. We got to get back to our state of normalcy. We, we cannot be out here smoking weed, brothers. We cannot be doing this. I'm sorry. The oppressor wants you caught off guard. He wants you smoking weed. He wants you drinking because you are off guard. You can't confront him when you're out here smoking weed. You can't confront him when you're out here drinking every day or drinking every, every weekend party. We need to be alert at 100% times. We don't need you out here smoking weed when you need to be protecting this black woman. We don't need you out here drinking when you need to be protecting this black woman. Stop all these things that we're doing. As a community, we spend so much money on alcohol. As a community, we spend so much money on weed. Brother, I saw a brother smoking marijuana. And he was rolling up in front of me. I said, all right, you can do your little roll-up thing, but take it away from me because I don't do that and I don't want to smell your stuff. And I said, brother, how much did that cost? And he said, uh, to $25. $25 for a tiny little bit of thing. But that $25 he could have used as a, as, a, as a startup for a business. Start up to, to start, a, 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 buy a book or start, start a, start a, um, C, be a CEO or something, something to better his life he could have used that for. But he would rather use it for something to just give him a high for a moment. To make him feel good. Instead of using that to better himself. Black man, we must always better ourselves. So again, we cannot be drinking or smoking. Uh, we should never be smoking. I don't want to even hear about cigarettes. That that's a that's a really big no no too because you just hurting up your lungs. But we should never be that. We have to not drink and we have to not smoke. We have to be ready at all times, black man. We have to be ready at all times. All times we must be ready. All times, because we understand that the moment we get caught slacking, the oppressors on us. We can't be out here slacking. We got to be a hundred. You got to be the full you every time. You can't be half high, half, half sober. No, we need you to be a hundred percent alert out here, black man. Okay, moving on to principle number 11. This is a big, very important one because we are doing this too much. The black man must not inflict harm unto the black man. Brothers, we can't be out here killing each other. I don't know what you think this is, but we can't be out here killing each other. Brothers, we can't be out here fighting each other, brothers. We are too valuable. We can't be killing each other. When we kill each other, we're killing our brother. <clears throat> we are killing another warrior. Black man's duty, especially the youth which this podcast is for, our duty as young black men is to protect our community. As a brother once said, Elders are for guidance. The youth are for war or warriors. We need to be out here fighting white supremacy, but instead we want to fight each other. So in that sense, we are out here aiding white supremacy because white supremacy's goal is to get rid of all of black people. They don't want all of us here. They don't want us here. They want to control us. And when they don't need us anymore, they will throw us away. So when you're out here killing your brother, you just like a white supremacist. You just like your oppressor. Because you out here doing his work for him. He don't have to go in the community and make up some laws to throw us in jail. No, he'll say, you know what? This guy, he'll just go do it himself. So you are part of the problem if you're doing that. I understand we have disagreements. I understand that. But we bust back on each other too much. We kill each other too much, brothers. I'm not going to dance around. I know some of y'all say, oh, here we go with the black-on-black -black crime. Well, when are we going to address it, family? We have to talk about this. We cannot be out here inflicting harm on each other. We, we can't be doing this. And for some reason, nobody wants to speak up about it these days. I'm willing to speak up. I don't care. We have to respect and love each other as brothers. Over here fighting for a block that you don't even own. You don't own the block. You just renting the block. You don't even own the house. You renting the house out. Come on, brothers. We got to do better than this. So, again. 
the black man must not inflict harm to the black man. We cannot be doing this, brothers. This is no ifs, ands, or buts. You have a disagreement? How about we do it the African way? Because the African way is when the elders when this elders would be summoned and they would sit down and they would guide the young people on how to come about this in a civil and righteous way and manner. That's what happened in African villages. They just go around and say, hey, you did this, I'm going to kill you. No. What we do is we come together as a community and we solve the situation. Some of us out here, we're too impulsive. We, again, we let our emotions control us. No. We have to do this in a civil manner. We cannot be acting off of emotion. We have to be acting off of discipline, brothers. Discipline. <clears throat> Number 12, the black man must make every move in silence. <laughs> Not everybody got to know what you're doing, brother. Not everybody got to know how you're living, brother. Not everybody got to know. You're about to come out with a business, all right. We're going to cuss that up. Not everybody got to know what we're doing. Because some of your friends right now, brothers, they they ready to snitch on you. They're ready to give y'all up. They looking for your downfall. So you out here talking about, oh, I'm going to do this. Some of the people who you think are your friends aren't really your friends. The oppressor's listening every day. He knows what we out here doing. But when you're giving up your ideas, you tell anybody what you're doing, they're going to find out. Move in silence. You got something coming up, drop it and we're waiting. I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it 100%. I don't know if I was very silent about starting this podcast, but. You know, I did let those who are close to me or those who are valued in friendship know, hey, I'm coming out with something. I didn't let everybody know, oh, oh I'm starting a podcast this day. No, I didn't let everybody know that. But I did let those who are close to me know. But I, I will not say I was the most silent about this because I probably wasn't. But when you're doing business deals, when you're making economic gains for the community, shh, keep that quiet. Ooh, not everybody got to know what we're doing, brothers. We out here moving in silence. Number 13, the black man must practice healthy spending. And this is another one that's going to get some of y'all. Don't be out here buying these stupid Air Jordans. You're spending $200 on, on Nikes. But how is that Nike better in your life? Oh, I, I got shoe game. Girls like shoe game. Brother, please. Your shoe game ain't going to make you start a company. Your, your, your shoe game... Your shoe game is not going to help you as a black man in America. You over here giving $200 to your oppressor. You don't even say, you know what, let me start my own black shoe brand. No, you want to go buy, you want to go buy Nikes. Come on, brother. You over here spending money on chains that won't even benefit your life. You spending money on expensive cars, but you still living where you know good and well you shouldn't be living. You over here spending money on stuff you don't need. There are kids at this campus, literally, there are kids in college who will spend money on shoes before they spend money on school books. So you out here spending money on shoes, but you can't buy no books for your class. And then you're talking about the school didn't give me enough resources. Brother, you didn't use your resources. You want to use your resources to get shoe game in order to get women. But in the end of the day, what? You're not benefiting your circumstances as a black man. And if a sister is going, and sisters too, if you're going off a brother off a shoe game, that ain't right. What the shoe game got to do with him? Bro, go into my closet. All my shoes, except for one pair that I got two years ago. Only one pair I got two years ago in the 80s. I spent about 80, I think it was $86 on that shoe. And they're two years old. All my shoes that I have in my closet are $30 I below. Each one of them. Each pair of them. They're about $30 I below. I don't spend money on shoes. I don't. Dress shoes, most of my mom and my dad gets them for me at this age. I'm going to start spending money on their own too, but they're not very expensive. You will not see them costing anything more than $50. But some of our brothers want to spend what, what, $180 on shoes. When I go out to buy dress shoes, I'm not spending no $180. We, we need to do better with our spending, brothers. Stop spending money on this fast food, too. Yes, I said it. I don't eat no more fast food, brothers. I don't. I don't eat no Chick-fil-A. I don't eat any Chick-fil-A. I don't eat no McDonald's. No. Fast food equals fast money. You're just giving away quick money that you could have used for your community. That time you want to spend money on fast food, put it in a jar. Save it. And see how much money you would accumulate from eating fast food. 
Learn how to cook, brothers. For those of y'all still living with your parents, cook more food. Don't be spending fast food. Don't be doing that. We cannot be giving our money back to those who oppress us and then want them to stop doing it because you're fueling their economy. Start spending money on shoes. Start spending money on fast food. Start spending money on these gold teeth, these gold chains that won't uplift your life. Stop spending money on these designer clothes. You out here buying Tommy Hilfiger. You out here buying um, Polo. Brother, if you don't stop buying these expensive clothes, and if you don't start buying what you need as a black man, saving your money for some real estate, for some land, for a business, for other books, for something that would better your life, for college, especially y'all ones still in elementary, high school, and middle school, save that money for college. No, nothing's cheap out here. You're going to need to buy books. Come on, family. We got to do better. We got to do better at all costs. Number 14, the black man must be dedicated to his race. Your number one dedication, black man, is to your race. And if you're so-called dedicated to your race, you will be dedicated also, number one, to your black woman. Because from her comes all these beautiful black children we have. Your number one dedication is to your race, black man. I don't want to hear nothing about it. Because when you, black man, succeed, you also help in the race. We got to understand that. When Haiti became independent, they were dedicated to the race because they said, hey, we're going to get our freedom and we're going to be the first black independent democracy in the world. Your first dedication is to your race. And we know that the Haitian Revolution inspired other revolts in the Caribbean and in others. But they said, hey, we got to be dedicated to the race first. We got to be dedicated to our race first, brother. Dedicated to race first. Race first policy. Anytime you want to do anything, think about it. If this is going to help the black man, is this going to hurt the black man? If this is going to help us have more black families, is this not going to help us have more black men? Be dedicated first. Race first dedication, brothers. We need to be dedicated to the race of the global black people first. I don't care where you are and you listen to this. I don't care if you're in Australia and you're a black man. Be dedicated to your race first, black man. Number 15, this one's hard because we as black people, black men especially, we still have a little, you know, we don't know how to sometimes, um, I'll admit, sometimes I'll look at brothers and I won't even say hello to them. I don't know, I gotta fix that myself. And I said, none of us are perfect, but we all gotta be striving to do better. The black man, number 15, is the black man must greet each other. Yeah, so as I said, this one's difficult. <laughs> you know, a lot of times I say hello to brothers, they act like I don't exist, and then sometimes they say hello to me, and I'm like, they don't exist. We gotta stop that. Now, I know most times we give each other the nod, hey, how you doing? I respect that. I understand. We That's a start, but we gotta start doing more. Hey, brother, how you doing today? I'm good. Hey, how you doing? We gotta greet each other more. We gotta understand we're a fighting unit. Because that black man out there who you walking past, he has to be fighting white supremacy just like you, so y'all have to greet each other. You gotta come back. We are comrades in this effort. We each are trying to do better for our people. So we got to greet each other, brothers. I'm working on it. It's tough. I understand. Sometimes you feel a little intimidated. Sometimes brothers might feel intimidated by seeing another one. I'm not. Well, it's just that sometimes if I see you and I don't know you, I just won't say hello. I got to do better than that. We got to do better. We got to greet each other more. We got to say hello to each other. I know this is the era of COVID-19, so you might say hello. Do the mask, you know, might just nod each other, I understand that, but we gotta say hello to each other more. We can't just be walking past each other if we don't know each other. We gotta be comrades, my brother. Number 16, the black man must only open up to black people. Now, a few people, when I introduced this to them, they were like, what do you mean by that? We gotta talk to, if we got an issue, we gotta go to a black person and talk to it about it. Because we gotta, we, gotta, we gotta form a bond within ourselves. We can't be talking to everybody else. Mm -mm. We gotta talk to black to black first. This is a community. You discuss and keep things within your community. You don't go out and let everybody else know what's going on with you. You got a problem, black man? Talk to your brother. I'm listening. I understand. We can work through I'll give you advice. You can give me advice. <clears throat> we are a black family. So when we got a situation, we got to open up to it with other black men. Excuse me. We got to talk to other black men. We got to open up to it with other black men. Because we are a family out here. We cannot... And we, we should not, and we, at the point it has to be, we will not be keeping things to ourselves as black men. We got to talk to other black men about our situation. And other, and black women as well too, the nurturer of the earth. 
the black number 17 is the black man must move towards African unification. When I say African unification, I mean the unification of Africa and also other diaspora states, such as other black states, such as Jamaica and, and Haiti and um, the Barbados and Dominica. We got to unify all our black states together, family. The success of the black of Africa and of other black nations is all of our success. Because when other black nations succeed, we succeed. When Africa succeeds, we succeed. Because Africa is the home to all black people. So we got to move toward that as black men. And what do I mean by that? You buying an African product, you buying black is already helping uh, the unification of Africa and black nations all around. Because we're keeping the dollars in the community. So we got to look toward that as black men. Number 18. The black man must include his family in his future. Your family is your legacy, black man. When you start one, I'm, I'm, I'm 18, I haven't started a family yet, but, you know, my family will be my legacy. Your family must be in your future. And the black man must always be looking towards making a family. <clears throat> we have a culture in today's society where, oh, we can have fun. You know, brothers will say, I've had my fun and games, it's time for me to look for a wife. You can't just have fun and games and then look for a wife, because you probably still don't want to do those fun and games. We got to be a family oriented people. We got to stop looking to have fun and start looking to be about business. And family is your legacy, black man. If you have no family, and when I say family, I mean you making a family. We get that straight. I mean you having a wife and children. Because some people are like, oh, your mother. Yeah, your mother should be including your future as well, too. But I'm talking right now about the black man starting his own family. You must also include them as well. Your family, your wife, and your children. Because we got to move as a unit. We got to move as a, as a community, as a group. And your first duty is to start a family as a black man. That's your duty. You must also do the same. And have a black family include them in your future. So a black man must include his family in his future. There's no question about that. The black, number 19. The black man must have a life goal. And have a self-determination leadership mentality. What's your goal, brother? Is your goal to be playing video games all your life? Is your goal to be to be smoking weed? To be drinking alcohol? What the what type of goal is that? Your goal needs to be something that's gonna help you. Oh, you wanna start a business. Oh, you wanna do own a farm. Oh, you wanna start a library. Oh, you, you wanna be a community activist. Oh, you wanna you wanna own a car dealership. Okay, we can get behind that. We we need that, brother. And this is also important to you sisters as well, too. Because when you approach your brother and he don't got a goal, that, that's on you if you if you stay with that man. Because he ain't going to bring nothing to your life, sister. Black man, we got to have goals out here. We got to be looking to help our people. What's your goal? And also, are, are you about self-determination? Are you going to continue to work for your oppressor? Do you want to continue to clock in at your job? Work five to nine? Work, work from nine to five? Come home? Or do you want to work nine to five for yourself? Or do you want to work nine to five with your family so your wife is also helping you? It's a family business. The children are learning. So you can retire at 55 and your children will already turn this small business into an empire. And you can live comfortably. You can know, hey, my goal turned out to be a success for my people and my family and my race. Or do you want to keep on working till you're six to five when you done got all these back pains? All this arthritis from overworking yourself. Or you were probably eating some of this unhealthy fast food out here. And now you got health problems. And now you retired at 65. And you're in the chair and you're old. Or do you want to be living that great life at 65 and you're watching your children continue your life dream? Ask yourself. Do you want to be, do you want to be self-determined? Do you want to determine your own future? Or do you want it to be dictated for you? We got to ask ourselves that as well, family. Number 20, last one. And this one, I'm also getting to learn it more too. But this is why I say different perspectives could come in and help. The black man must be knowledgeable of the law. We must know the law. Um, I've heard that the brothers who are part of the Moorish community, a lot of them know the law. They know the law more than you than you may know because they're very strict on the law. They know that we have the right to form militia to protect ourselves. They know that we have certain rights that some of you may not know right now. So we must be knowledgeable of the law. 
You understand? We got black lawyers out here. All right, let's dissect the law and let's. How about one of us make a black law book? And the law and the Moorish people, they already have a law book for black people in America. I'm gonna try to get my hands on it. But we, but we, we need to have a sense of um, we need to know the laws of this country. Yeah, we we may not. A lot of us, like me, I say, I say I'm African. I'm African American. We may not claim America, but we live here. We gotta know the laws of this country, whether we like it or not. We got we got to be knowledgeable of the law so that we know our rights and what we can do as black people. Because we got a lot of rights that a lot of us don't think about. A lot of us out here, we we afraid to really organize to protect our community. We think the police is supposed to do that. No. You're supposed to do that, black man. Your your number your job is to be the protector and the provider for your black woman and your and the kids in the community. You need to get together with your other brothers, stop sitting on the street corner, drinking a cold forty, and start sitting on the street corner willing to protect your community. All right, brothers. So those are twenty principles of black manhood. Twenty principles of black manhood that I've introduced. For black men this week, I'm going to try to do this more often every time I do an episode, but I'm going to give you a lecture to look up to, especially our youth. <clears throat> Watch The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys by Dr. Jawanza Kumfunju. I'll repeat that again. The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys by Dr. Jawanza Kumfunju. This brother, very notable scholar, elder in the community, lists out specifically how America, our oppressors, are trying to destroy black boys. Not black men, because he says specifically, if you can get him as a boy, you don't have to worry about him when he gets older. He won't become a man. But they're trying to destroy you as a boy. So please watch that lecture. It's about an hour long. Very interesting. It's on YouTube, my brothers. We, we need to start looking into this. And sisters, watch it as well, too, because some of you guys might have a uh, you know, you guys are going to, a lot of us out here, you're going to have sons. So you got to look and probably for a mate. Look at how he breaks down how the black man has been broken down. And mind you, family, he didn't do this. This was done in the 1980s. So we, we're already, you know, we've already been informed by him, Dr. Francis Quest Welsing, Welsing, especially, who told us that they're trying to destroy the black man. So, you know, to be honest, I don't want some of these brothers out here looking around like, oh, What's happened? No. Y'all, we know the hookup. I know the game. We should know the game by now. We were warned in 1980. We know what they're trying to do to us. Now we got to act off of principle. So again, my brothers and sisters, 20 principles of black manhood. And me and brother Amar Saunders came up with who currently attends Winston-Salem State University. These are 20 principles of black manhood. I'll repeat that again. Brothers, let's implement these into my life. I carry a list of them in my wallet. We, we gotta carry this around, brother. This is this is 2020. The black man is on life support. We cannot be out here doing what we want to do. No, we gotta do what's best for us as black men and the race. I'm sorry, brothers. Every other community puts duty number one. Black man, you must put your duty number one. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. This is the first episode I've really gone into some serious discussion and topic. I hope that you guys enjoyed the previous episode. I hope and I pray that I will continue to do more episodes. Hope you, please stay safe during this COVID-19 epidemic. And um, I'll leave you guys in the name of Hotep. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, for listening to today's episode again. And please continue to do well. Hotep, brothers and sisters.